Welcome to everyone. I'm Khulud Galul, and this work is titled Mining Assumptions for Software Components Using Machine Learning. The work has been done in collaboration with Claudio Menghi, Shiva Nijati, Lionel Brion, and David Wolf. I will first present the assumption generation problem, the problem that is handled in this work. This work concerns cyber physical systems. Cyber physical systems are systems in which the physical and the software components are deeply intertwined. The development of software components generally follows three phases. Modeling phase, in which the developers produce a model of the system. Verification phase, where designers probably demonstrate the correctness of the system and their analysis for a given system requirement. Coding phase, in which the model is translated into actual executable code. Our contribution that will be discussed in the following aims to help designers during the verification phase. There are many automatic techniques to analyze whether a model satisfies or violates its requirement. One of them is model checking. Model checking is generally indecidable for the systems that are too complex to be verified exhaustively and in their entirety. Therefore, model checking cannot be applied on industrial models. However, model checking can be applied to verify subcomponents of the model. When subcomponents are analyzed, requirements may fail to hold for some inputs even if their design is correct. This is because inputs are not constrained anymore by the values that can be generated within the larger model it's extracted from. Therefore, we need to restrict inputs of subcomponents by adding assumptions. These assumptions are usually not explicitly documented. We consider Autopilot as a case study, an open source realistic model available on MathWix, along with MATLAB and Simulink products. Autopilot is a component of the software that is deployed on an aircraft. It receives its inputs from other components, like the sensors and the flight director, and it controls the aircraft orientation. This slide presents an, an example where engineers analyze the autopilot component against this requirement. When the autopilot is enabled, the aircraft altitude should reach the desired altitude within 500 seconds. For example, in the picture below, you can see the desired altitude. The pilot wants essentially to reach that altitude starting from an initial one. First, engineers check whether the requirement is satisfied. However, the requirement is not satisfied. There are two possible causes for the requirement violation. The model is faulty or some assumptions on the inputs of the model are missing. In the second case, engineers need to add an assumption to ensure that the property is satisfied. For instance, they add an assumption on the throttle. The throttle is an input of the model. It indicates the amount of power to give to the engines. First, the assumption is to give a minimum value to the throttle, 20%. The airplane still cannot reach the desired altitude, but it's closer. In this case, engineers need to increase the throttle value to 40%. The requirement is still violated, but the severity of the violation decreased. By increasing the throttle to 60%, the requirement got satisfied. By increasing more the throttle to 80%, the requirement is satisfied and the satisfaction degree is higher. In our case study, engineers did not document assumptions on the autopilot inputs. By consulting a book on advanced avionics, which is designed for aircraft pilots, we discovered that when the aircraft has no auto throttle, there is an implicit assumption on the behavior of the autopilot, which must be considered by the pilot. Essentially, pilots need to provide the engines of the aircraft with enough power to ensure that the aircraft does not enter a stall condition. To pass the requirement, engineers have to add assumptions on the inputs. Manually identifying and documenting these assumptions is a complex problem. Therefore, our goal is to help engineers identify assumptions that describe conditions under which the requirements of interest are satisfied. The result should be at least a satisfaction. The problem is to generate assumptions that lead to the satisfaction of the requirement. To be more precise, formally, the designer has a model, a requirement, and a degree of satisfaction. The designer wants to compute an assumption. In our case, we consider zero safe assumption, which means that the requirement is satisfied. We aim to generate V-safe assumptions. On the other hand, 
we aim to generate the most informative among the VSAFE assumptions. Let us consider two assumptions A1 and A2. On the left side, A1 assumes that throttle is higher than 60%. As you can see, this satisfies the assumption. On the right side, you can see that the throttle is higher than 80%. In this case, the requirement is satisfied as well. Both of them are VSAFE assumptions. However, A1 is more informative because the threshold 60% gives the pilot more flexibility on the value selected for the throttle. Then, the pilot has more options and he knows that the property will remain satisfied. In this work, the ultimate goal is to produce the most informative VSAFE assumption that can guarantee the satisfaction of our requirement. Our work is developed under the following prerequisites. Prerequisite 1, the model is specified in Simulink. Simulink is a widely used modeling language. Prerequisite 2, the requirement is specified in logical language. This is to ensure that the requirement can be analyzed by model checkers or tested using search-based testing techniques. Both techniques are parts of Epicurus, therefore the, this prerequisite should hold. Prerequisite 3, the satisfaction of the requirement of interest over the considered component can be verified using a model check. Prerequisite 4, the requirement and the negation of the requirement should be violated for some inputs, because otherwise an input assumption is not needed if the requirement is satisfied or violated for all possible inputs. Now I will provide a brief overview which presents and describes Epicurus, our approach to automatically generate assumptions. We propose Epicurus, an automated approach to infer environment assumptions for system components. This slide presents an overview of Epicurus. Epicurus iteratively performs the following three main steps. First, the test generation procedure where the goal is to generate a test suite of test cases such that some test inputs lead to the violation of the requirement and some others lead to the satisfaction of it. The second step is the assumption generation, which infers an assumption from the test cases. The test cases are labeled by pass or fail, so we apply classification decision trees on the test suite to derive an assumption. Finally, the model check-in procedure, which takes the obtained assumption and exhaustively checks whether the requirement restricted by the assumption is satisfied. As it's clear from the figure, the assumption generation procedure is really sensitive to the test cases generated by the test generation procedure. For this reason, and as part of the work's novelty, we propose a new test case generation strategy, namely an important feature boundary test to generate test cases that allow effective learning of VSAFE assumptions. We will first discuss how these three components are implemented, then we will discuss in details IFPT. The test generation procedure generates input signals over simulation time that are meaningful. The signals are encoded using three parameters, the input domain, the number of control points, and the interpolation function. The test generation algorithm uses these parameters as follows. First, the input domain for each input signal specifies the boundaries of the signal values. For example, our signal should stay between 2 and 4. Then the algorithm selects the control point values. Finally, it uses the interpolation function to link the control point values. Our test generation procedure relies on a test case generation policy to select values of control points for each test input. We use test generation policies coming from the literature, such as UR and ART. After we generate the test input, we simulate the model. Then we label the test input with the output pass or fail. The second procedure is the assumption generation. It relies on classification trees to infer assumptions this slide presents an example of an assumption tree. Each branch contains a condition on one control point value. Each leaf node is labeled with pass or fail, which indicates the verdict of the majority of the test cases present at each leaf. This percentage is the percentage of the test cases which are labeled with the same label as the leaf node. The idea is to infer assumptions from the leaf nodes where all the test cases are labeled with pass. From this tree, we infer an assumption from the branches that link node 1, 3, and 4, which gives this assumption. Finally, the obtained assumption is converted into constraints over signal variables. 
The last step of Epicurus concerns the, the checking of the assumptions. We exhaustively check whether the obtained assumptions is accurate. We use QVTrace, which is a tool for model checking that we received from our partner QRA Corp, which is a Canadian tool vendor working in the automotive and the aerospace domain. In the following slides, I will explain in details IFBD, our proposed test generation technique. The idea of proposing a new test generation technique was motivated by two conjectures, which enable more effective learning of the safe assumptions. The graph in the slide explains the conjectures with an example of a model with two inputs, the throttle in the x-axis and the wheel in the y-axis. Conjecture one is about focusing the search on the most important control points. For example, I start generating test cases, I change only the wheel values, however, I do not notice any impact on the fitness. On the other hand, when I change the values of the throttle, at some point, the requirement changes from violated to satisfied. We conclude that the throttle has more impact on the fitness, therefore, identifying such important features and focusing the search on them enables more effective learning of the safe assumptions. Conjecture two is about generating test cases in the boundary area. Basically, we focus the search on the throttle by changing its value and focusing the generation on the areas of the boundary to learn the boundary. So we generate more test cases in smaller ranges. And the more we generate test cases, the better we learn the boundary. How do we generate test cases? First, we build a regression tree to learn the impact of control point values on the, on the fitness value. Second, we get the most important feature among the control points, which follows from conjecture one. The most important feature in this case is throttle one. Third, we extract the test cases that are the closest to the boundary. To do so, among all the leaves in the tree, we pick the two leaves with average fitness value that are closest to zero. In this case, we select the node two and node four. The first step is to extract ranges from the constraints on the most important feature. In our case, the most important feature is throttle one. The constraints in the boundary are throttle is less than 60, throttle is less than 90. Then two ranges are extracted out from the constraints. The first range is equal to 60 minus 10%, 60 plus 10%. The second range is equal to 90 minus 10%, 90 plus 10%. Finally, for each test case, we get the ranges associated with the most important feature. We generate new test cases from the test cases extracted in the third step. In our case, we change the values of the throttle one according to the ranges shown in the slide. Now I will discuss how Epicurus has been implemented. We implemented Epicurus and we made it available online. To implement the test generation procedure, we relied on Stalero, a widely known falsification-based testing framework. Concerning the assumption generation part, we used statistics and machine learning toolbox provided by MATLAB. For model checking, we used QVTrace, which is provided by QRA. We empirically evaluated Epicurus by answering the following research questions. Which test generation policy learn assumptions most effectively and efficiently? Can Epicurus generate assumptions for real-world simulink models within a practical time limit? With this question, we investigate four test generation policies, UR, ART, IFBT-UR, and IFBT-ART, and determine which policy can help compute the most informative safe assumptions in the least time. As a study subject, we considered 11 industrial open source simulink models developed by Lockheed Martin, which is a global security and aerospace company. The case studies have a list of functional requirements to be verified. We considered in total 92 requirements. Among those, 18 are processed by Epicurus because they satisfy the prerequisites that I presented earlier. The 72 remaining requirements cannot be processed by Epicurus because they violate at least one of the prerequisites. For most of them, the requirement was satisfied or violated for all the inputs meaning that the property was already satisfied or the model was faulty. So overall, we consider 18 requirements and we compare our four test generation policies in terms of the safety and informativeness. For each requirement and study subject, 
we execute different experiments considering input signals with three input profiles. We executed 50 experiment runs. We recorded the percentage of runs where Epicurus was able to compute vSafe assumption. We computed the average execution time. We measured the information index. To get the information index, we compute for each assumption learned from by the test case generation policy. The number of times this assumption was more informative than another assumption learned with a different test case generation policy. For the same model, requirement, experiment, and number of control points. The scatter plot in this slide shows the results of RQ1 obtained when comparing different test generation strategies in terms of effectiveness and efficiency. To compare efficiency, we consider the average execution time of each test case generation policy across different experiments. The lower the time, the more efficient a test case generation policy. To compare effectiveness, we consider the safety values and the information index of the assumptions learned by different test case generation policies. The higher the value, the higher the effectiveness of the test case generation policy. Each point in the scatter plot is labeled with the information index associated to that policy. The higher this index, the more informative the VSAFE assumption is computed with the test case generation policy. Overall, we retrieve two conclusions. First, the results show that IFBTUR is the best case generation policy. IFBTUR has indeed both the lowest average execution time and the highest VSAFE percentage. Second, IFBTUR's information index is higher than those of the other policies. So the assumptions learned by IFBTUR are more informative than those learned by other test generation policies. In this question, we investigate if Epicurus, when used with the best test generation policy identified in RQ1, can generate VSAFE assumptions for our real-world study subject model within a practical time limit. We executed Epicurus using the best test generation policy identified by RQ1. We considered the full list of requirements which can be processed by Epicurus. We compute among the requirements and 50 experiments the percentage of requirements uh, for which an assumption is computed. Furthermore, we examine the assumptions by checking whether the requirements are vigorously satisfied by the computed assumption. Epicurus computed a VSAFE assumption within one hour for around 78% of the requirements. Across all 50 runs, which take around four hours per requirement, Epicurus computed a VSAFE assumption for all the 18 requirements. The average number of constraints in an assumption is 2.4 with 5.4 predicates on average. We conclude that the computed assumptions are relatively simple, thus easy to understand and not complex. As a conclusion in this work, we proposed Epicurus, an approach to automatically infer assumptions for software components such that they are guaranteed to satisfy their requirements under those assumptions. We proposed an encoding to represent the input signal. We rely on empirical data generated based on the testing to infer assumptions. Hence, our approach is applicable to complex signal-based modeling notations commonly used in the CPS systems. Our approach combines search-based software testing with machine learning decision trees to learn assumptions, in contrast to existing work where assumptions are often synthesized based on logical inference frameworks. Finally, we proposed IFBT, a novel test generation technique that relies on feedback from the machine learning decision trees to guide the generation of the test cases by focusing on the most important features and the most informative areas in the search space. Our evaluation shows that Epicurus is able to compute VSAFE assumptions, the computed assumptions are short and non vacuous and the obtained assumptions are computed based on a large set of requirements. Thank you very much.